Liz Ness here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this gingham styled pattern with a watercolor twist. So let's go ahead and get started. This is kind of like a painted gingham style, how the pattern will go. And with the watercolor, the edges here look a little dark. And of course, there's a little bit of overlap, so it's darker wherever it overlaps. And then also the lines are not really straight when it's watercolored. So we kind of want to create that more organic -y, hand done look uh, digitally. So digitally, it's really easy to do everything perfectly. And we kind of want to go a little bit more lo-fi. And <laughs> so that's what we're after today. I have open here a nice 12 inch by 12 inch canvas at 300 dpi and I work in that size because that's about the maximum size that I would need for any of my projects but of course you can use any other size that you'd like. Um, the one key though is to have it as a square it makes it a lot easier for making uh, both textures and patterns, uh, pattern stamps later. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to tap our wrench here and then we're going to go to canvas and drawing guide and we turn that on and then we're going to edit the drawing guide. Now in a typical gingham pattern you'd have a strip in quadrants like this and just a simple uh, segmentation like this is uh, perfect for that. So you'd have a strip and a strip and you'd overlap them and blend them and get what you want. Um, in this case however we want it to be a little bit more organic looking so we need a little bit more data than just a simple square. We're going to need a couple more squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the max grid size here to be 600 pixels and I'm going to turn up the opacity and the thickness just so it's easier to see for the video. And when you're satisfied, go ahead and tap done. The next thing I'm going to do is select a color. Now I have this really awesome uh, black and white monochrome palette available for instant download at my site and I highly recommend getting it. I find it really useful and it saves me time. The top layer here is um, uh, it's segmented out by 25%. So you have 100% black, 75%, 50, 25, and then white. The bottom one is all in 10% increments. And again, this is available just to visitors to my site. Having said all of that, let's go ahead and choose the 75% gray here. Okay. And then we're going to go over to our selection tool here and we're going to select rectangle and fill those options. And then we're going to draw starting from the outside of the canvas big enough a rectangle that will fit over this first segment. So let's go ahead and just do that. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfectly up to that line, just close enough, just like that. Okay, that's great. Deselect that selection tool so that we let go of it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my calligraphy set and I am going to select the monoline tool here. And um, this is just the brush that comes standard with the Procreate uh, initially. And I'm going to dial that all the way up. But before I start using it, I'm going to go over and select the transform tool. And I have snapping selected with a distance of three, which is default and just snapping, not magnetics. I prefer to use it that way. But this will allow me to move this uh, shape over and it lets me know with these golden lines that I'm still at page's edge. That's great for a seamless pattern. You want to make sure that you are right at the edge because you don't want any lines to form uh, in your pattern. So that's where I want it is just lined up right over the center of that. Okay. And the next thing we need to be aware of is that we want to make sure that this edge right here and this edge right there stay exactly the way they are um, because this is how our seamless pattern, this is what matches up as the tiles move. And so um, I don't want to do too much down here, but I do want to change the lines just so they look a little less regular like our little sample here, especially, you know, it's like there's a little bit of movement along that. So that's what I'm going to um, sort of fake here <laughs> with my monoliner. So I'm just going to kind of come across and I don't want too much and I want to go back into the regular too uh, just so that it's believable so that we have the straight line down here it's going to be believable because there's other straight lines. Now this is just a little bit too severe so I'm going to kind of draw it out a little bit smoother like that. Okay and I'm going to do the same to the other side too. Whoops. Oops. Okay. Just like that. So it just kind of looks like we had our watercolor brush and we're kind of, you know, not so, not so perfect, but not too bad either. Um, let's see, I think I want this to go just a little bit longer 
There we go. Okay, that's great. I think that's good enough. And actually, let's see, do I, do I think it's good enough? <laughs> Maybe I want this to go just a little bit more down like that. And this too. Oops, that was too much. Okay, yeah, that looks a little bit better maybe okay I, I think what's going on is this is so out there so let's see if I can just move that out just a little bit there we go okay I think I like that better so now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this so popping open the layers and then gently sliding this layer to the left and tap duplicate and then I'm going to use my transform tool and the first thing I'm going to do is flip this vertically because I don't want them to look identical and in fact I'm going to move this all the way over Let's see, it doesn't really matter because next to it this way or that way, it doesn't really matter, but I just want to move it all the way over just so I can uh, play with this a bit. Okay, that looks pretty, whoops. Okay, wow, I keep moving my finger. There we go, that looks pretty good, so. Okay, and now I'm just going to go ahead and tap that layer and select Merge Down. So now these are on the same layer. Okay, so I'm going to draw one more. So let's create a new layer here. And we're going to select our selection tool. And we're just going to fill up one of these sections here. And just do our best. There we go. And then I'm going to select the Transform tool. And I'm moving it right to the center there. And then I'm going to do the same thing, uh, creating less than perfect edge there. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to mimic that this is a little bit darker, darker, sorry, along the edges. And so, especially like that right in there. So I want to kind of create that look. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to merge this down, this layer down. And then I'm going to create a layer on top. I'm going to tap that layer and I'm going to select a clipping mask. And then I'm going to change my color to black. And I'm going to change my brushes. I'm going to go down to the water brushes and I'm going to select this wash right here. And let's see what size is that. I think I want it somewhere around 10% eh, I think is good. And let's see, I've got black. And so I'm going to just start going along the edges. But again, trying not to do anything right on that edge. I don't want it to be too obvious that I'm not doing anything on the edge, but I just kind of want to do a little bit here and there and leave some blanks along the way. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. We're just going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to use the smudge tool. Press and hold it so I get the smudge. And I'm going to kind of smudge that out so it's not quite so severe in there. Same with this one. So kind of take it back out a little bit. So it's just the edges that really are showing up. And I think that's good for this one too. Okay, good. That looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, I'm going to go back to my brush and I'm going to catch that final one here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is go back up to that layer and I'm going to tap it and merge it down. And then I'm going to create a duplicate of this. Okay, and then I'm going to select my transform tool and I'm going to rotate twice 45 degrees. And then I'm going to still with my transform selected, I'm going to get this in position and I like how it's, whoops, well I have it centered. <laughs> Let's see, there we go, where is the centering? Okay, well, it's edge to edge. I don't know if centering's not showing anymore. That's all right. So edge to edge is what I want. It doesn't really have to be centered, but it does have to be edge to edge. So that looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and invert these, but I'm also going to get rid of my grid here. So let's go ahead and do that first. So tapping the wrench, canvas, and then turn off that drawing guide. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to tap invert because I really want my stamp to be white um, because wherever white is with the stamp or the texture, um, that is where the color will be strongest that you select when you're using these brushes. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the brush below it, invert, and then I'm gonna turn off this background color 
And then I'm going to go back up to that layer one duplicate and I'm going to tap the blending mode. So N to pop open the blending mode panel here. And I think I want to do this at screen. Yeah, screen. That's perfect. Okay. And what I'm really looking for is that there's this color is the same as that color. Um, so that's what will get out to the gingham style pattern look. Okay. And you can still just barely see like there's extra little white in there. So that adds to that watercolor look too. So, okay. That, that looks pretty good. I think we're ready to go ahead and take a snapshot of this for our brush. So let's go over to our wrench, select add and copy canvas. And now we're going to go to that brush that I mentioned that is available for my email subscribers. And it is the essential starters. And this just saves a lot of time. These brush settings have all been established to create certain types of brushes. So I have a texture starter here. I'm going to go ahead and slide that to the left and duplicate it. And I'm going to tap that, uh, duplicate. And then it will tell you whether it's the shape or grain that you change. In this case, it's the grain. And so we're going to go ahead and tap edit and then import and paste. And then we want the, the pattern to be in white. So we're going to just click with our fingers there, two fingers, and that switches it over. It inverts inside here. All right. And then we're just going to tap done. And as you can see, I think maybe you can see, um, it's not showing my transparency. So see, so we need to change that, but we'll do that in just a second here. So I want to also change the scale here. It's like, it needs to be about 35%. I think somewhere in there. Yep. 34. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go to rendering and I'm going to select light glaze and this will, uh, show the transparency in our pattern, which is what we want. Okay. That looks, <laughs> I love the way that looks. Okay. So now we're ready to test it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the visibility of those two layers, turn the background color back on, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, select uh, the a new layer here. There we go. And I'm just going to leave black selected and I'm going to speed up the video, turn up the pattern here. And I have to keep my finger down because of the transparency aspect of this particular pattern. I need to keep my finger down until the whole entire pattern is complete. Otherwise it'll, uh, transparency itself over the other part of the pattern and it'll be obvious. So let's go ahead and speed up that video. Okay. That looks great. I love the way that it looks. It looks very, very much like it's a, a watercolored effect here. So, so now I'm ready to actually take this and turn it into my stamp. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's turn off the background and let's go ahead and invert that foreground. There we go. That's what I really want. So got to invert that after the test. Okay. Now we can go over to our wrench and copy canvas. Okay. And then we're going to go up here to, um, this one, it says pattern stamp starter big. So I'm going to click that gently slide it over and do, whoops, no, no, not to du not delete it, <laughs> duplicate it. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to tap that. It's already selected. And in this case, it's the shape that needs to be replaced. So we're just going to go in there, edit, import and paste. Awesome. Looks great. All right. So done and done. Now let's go ahead and test this one with some color. Um, I'm going to turn the background color back on, turn off the visibility of that layer and create a new layer. And then let's choose a color. Oh, I like this pumpkin one right there. And let's go ahead and stamp right in there. Now that's great. Oh my gosh. I kind of messed up where I punched it though. So let's do that. Okay. That looks much better. Um, wow. Well, this is just so much fun. I love it. And you can do any color you want. And, uh, you know, and also the cool thing about the stamp is that you can bring, bring it down to, you know, different size. However, it works for you for different projects. So, but I like the size. I think this looks great. And, uh, and I love the way that it looks so organic and, uh, it's just so much fun. So I hope you enjoy this project yourself and I can't wait to see what you use it in. And, uh, it's been so much fun and I hope your day is amazing.